Welcome to Hoops Junction. Game four, the Warriors win it 108-97. I'm gonna go over a few keys of the game, but I just want to clarify one thing. When everybody kept asking about what happened to Steph Curry, what was the issue with him? Um, is he hurt? Is he this? Is he that? I wrote an article about this yesterday. I said that the Cavaliers wanted Stephen Curry to continue to be non-aggressive, non-lethal, to be docile, to be passive-aggressive. That's what they wanted. When the media started riling him up, talking about he's had, you know, he had two points last game and a half. He only scored 11 game one, 18 game two. You know, people forgot that Curry's not even 100%. That's why I picked the Cleveland Cavaliers to defeat the Warriors. But tonight, he showed you that despite anything, despite stuff slowing him down, he was the man tonight. He had 38 points. I mean, he had six assists. He only had three turnovers. You know, and LeBron had seven turnovers. So, just an all-out great game. He had two steals. He had five rebounds. Curry came to play tonight. And it shows whenever he's playing well. Klay Thompson had 25. You know, he went 7 for 14, 50% from the field. Um, he didn't, they didn't let the foul trouble get them in trouble. And it just goes to show you, it's just like, you got to understand, a point guard's job is not to score how you think, like, like a LeBron James, like a Michael Jordan. A point guard's job is to distribute the ball, to run the offense. Curry's just one of these freak anomalies where he could score the basketball, but he could dish the rock. He could be an extension of the coach. But, you know, being a point guard is one of the toughest jobs in in, in basketball, period, because you have so many jobs. So his job is his number one job isn't to score. His number one job is to guide the, the, the game and the tempo so they could win. But I said it in my article yesterday. I said I look I expected Curry to have a big game. And guess what? Thirty eight points. Hushed hushed all the critics. And somebody woke up. They call him the baby face assassin. Somebody woke up the baby. And the baby was like this. Not the mama. Not the mama. Not the mama. And he, he, he definitely showed it to the Cleveland Cavaliers. They were not not the mama, man. It was not it was not their night tonight, man. You look at their stats earlier in the game. They were dominating the game. They had like a, a eight-point lead in the third quarter. But something twist changed. And I think it was Andre Iguodala. And Klay Thompson, you know, Andre Iguodala is a fire starter. A lot of people want to ask, you know, why did he win MVP last year? This is why he won MVP last year. Because of what he did, he did, what he did the defense he did on LeBron. But he's the catalyst. He was grabbing rebounds. He was getting deflections. There were a couple plays he had a couple jumpers. He had a three to tie the game in the third. And he made a crucial pass for Thompson to give the Warriors a three-point lead. And then from then on, Cleveland took a one-point lead, but they couldn't sustain it. And all of that was because of a play of, of um. Um, Andre Iguodala, and then you factor it on top of that everything else. Draymond Green they didn't even have a, they almost had a triple double, but to me, triple doubles don't mean anything to me if you're not winning the game. But he had 11 rebounds, he had 12 rebounds. No, he didn't almost have a triple double. What am I talking about? He had 12 rebounds, pardon me, four assists, and nine points. But guess what? He had huge three blocks. He had a couple blocks. I think one was on LeBron. I think he had another one on Kyrie that they gave him. So these guys, they're more important. They're so important. And people that don't understand the nuances of basketball don't understand that the guys that are making all the little plays, all the effort plays, rebounding, steals. There's even a, a, a time when Iguodala threw the ball away behind the back. He gets the rebound, comes back down, and he just hits a jumper in the lane. He, he, he recognizes time and score. Players that do that, they're so valuable. They're more valuable than a player that could razzle-dazzle through the legs, a player that could shoot a, a, a thousand threes, a player that could dunk on every, they're Those players are more important because they just know how to play the game. And the thing is with the Warriors, they have more playmakers. And I didn't fact, in my prediction, I didn't factor in their, their playmakers would, would come up so big, but they did and they had to. And... It's, it, it shows. And players like Andre Iguodala, players like Draymond Green, they're so invaluable. They just make all the difference. You know, we've got to talk about Cleveland because, you know, they put up a fight earlier in the game, but towards the end, you know, even in the fourth, fourth quarter, they're only down eight. 
they start jacking up threes, jacking up threes, and it just wasn't a good look. I mean, LeBron James, 11 for 21, 1 for 5 from 3. He had 25 points, 13 rebounds, and uh, 9 assists. Now, people will say, well, that's good numbers. That's great numbers. It doesn't matter if you're losing the game. It doesn't matter if you're not aggressive. It doesn't matter if if you're having lapses on defense, if you're holding. You know, there's one play he grabs Draymond Green, throws him to the floor, and walks over the guy, and then he, he has the nerve to call the guy a bitch. I mean, how, what was a bitch about what he did? He didn't do anything to you. You know, it's, and LeBron, Draymond Green has a lot of dirty player tendencies. Sometimes he could just be outright dirty. But honestly, growing up, that's how most of the people played when I grew up. You know, punching, kicking, scrapping, that's how we played. So, I know it's, it's dirty by today's standards, but, you know, backtrack 10 years ago, not even 10 years, you know, like in the 90s and early 2000s, that's how everybody played. So, you know, the guy kept his composure when he needed to, and he comes back down and gets a big block on LeBron. I mean, so there's certain, certain things that you got to understand, and he, he had great rebounds. So, you know, honestly, Kyrie Irving, 14 for 28, he had 34 points. He did his job to me. LeBron James... With all the pad in the stats and all the numbers he had, the numbers don't even matter because eight of those points came down the stretch when it was garbage time. He failed his team. He failed his team. Point blank. Period. I don't. I don't. I. I'm. I'm. I'm just gonna be objective. He had great numbers, but he failed his team because he wasn't aggressive. He kept trying to pass. He just didn't want it. He didn't want the pressures of. Taking a shot, missing a shot. Taking a shot, making a shot. He didn't want him to say, he didn't want Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith. He didn't want any of those guys saying, well, LeBron is the reason why we lost. He wanted to play this, take the safe route instead of letting it fly. Because at the end of the day, you're down 10, two minutes left in the game. You got to let it fly. If you're the best player on the team, you got to let it fly. Kyrie Irving made more offensive plays down the stretch than LeBron, in my opinion. And... But see, this is the problem for Cleveland. They have a guy that's a freak of nature. They got a guy that can score the basketball. Where are the rest of the playmakers? Richard Jefferson's not a playmaker. Three points. Tristan Thompson's not a playmaker. Ten points, seven rebounds. He has six offensive rebounds, which was great. But down the stretch, he got tired from Garden Curry, trying to run up on the guy all the time. He kept getting blown by. And he just can't make a play. Then you got J.R. Smith, three for ten. 10 point. He had Jared Smith had five fouls. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, Richard Jefferson fouled out six fouls. Nobody even noticed that he fouled out. They, they don't have playmakers. Then they had the nerve to have Kevin Love off the bench. Everybody was saying they agreed with it. I did not agree with that crap. That was garbage to me. He was three for six. He had 11 points. He went to. He had five rebounds. I think if somebody's your starter and they're able to play, you play them. Like you would never hear this. I think oh, when Curry got hurt, they, he came off the bench. But that was like first quarter. He played the entire game after that. I think with the, the Trailblazers. Yeah, there it was. He came back for the Trailblazers. He played the entire second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. Overtime, he played. That's a joke. And that just shows the, the, the games that Steve Kerr's playing and Tyron Lue's playing. Steve Kerr's playing chess and Tyron Lue's playing checkers. You got your best player. You know, he's not great on defense. But when you substitute him, you substitute in Shannon Fry for for uh, Kevin Love, a guy that could actually possibly get you rebounds. I mean, Kevin Love, made, he, he could make plays. But other than Kevin Love and LeBron, LeBron James and Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love is not really the greatest playmaker. But I, I would have him out there than Shannon Fry. Honestly, the Cavs... They thought that they were gonna overwhelm the Golden State Warriors by wrestling. They think they thought it was a wrestling match and not a basketball match. And the thing is, basketball is basketball. It doesn't matter where you play it. How, uh, it doesn't matter what country you're in. It doesn't matter the competition. Basketball is basketball. And Warriors, the Warriors tonight, they played basketball. They didn't wrestle. The Cavaliers were trying to wrestle. They're trying to suplex, put people in the crippler cross face. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace. Mr. Benoit, they try to um, they try to uh, choke slam people. LeBron, he hit Curry in the neck. He pushed Draymond Green out, uh, walked over him like he was about to 
put um put him in the uh what was that? <laughs> What was that old move with a what's his name used to grab him and he puts him in a in a torture rack or whatever? Um, he had um who else? He had Sean Livingston in the face with an elbow and they didn't call it. So many calls that they didn't call. They just let them play physical. Let them play physical because the referees didn't want to be responsible for Cleveland's demise. But guess what, referees? You weren't the sixth man tonight. You didn't come off the bench for them. They put themselves in this sling. I said it time and time again when the Cavs lost game two. That was that was bad. That was awful for them because they were unable to get that split. You cannot allow a team that's better than you to win two games in a row. You know what I'm saying? That's like that's like if All right, for example, uh, let let me you know, I'm not going to even go there, but that's like with the whole thing with Toronto. They let the Cavs win two straight games and by big margins, and it's just like it tells you like these guys are better than you. Yes, they're way better than you because they won two straight. It wasn't even comp. So you can't allow that. Cleveland allowed that. They didn't even let Golden State make Golden State feel them. And it is it is what it is, man. You got to give all the credit to the Warriors. They took a lot of slack. Everybody was saying, oh, this is a series now. This is that. Um, LeBron James, and, and they're, they're out physical. You know, I saw an article today on ESPN, has the Cav- have the Cavaliers figured the Warriors out. How you figure them out and you're down 2-1? Now 3-1. How did you figure them out? It's just crazy how all these storylines in the media. It's just... It's too many... It, to me, it's like this. It's too many too many people in the media that just don't know what they're talking about. And when they don't know what they're talking about, they fuel other people that just don't have a lot of basketball knowledge and savvy. You know what I'm saying? Like A lot of people don't know anything about basketball, but they think... Okay, this ESPN said it, so it got to be true. Um, Hoops Junction, even me, I could probably be guilty of this. Maybe I say something that's you know somebody doesn't know nothing about. But you know, what I'm saying I've I watched the game. I'm not just I've been studying the game, steward the game, play the game. So I know I know certain nuances that most people aren't gonna pick up on. And that game two loss was a was a bad 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 sign for the Cavaliers because. It just showed LeBron wasn't aggressive. And you got to look at all these games. I think besides game one, LeBron hasn't been aggressive. I think game three, he was... A, no, besides game three, other, all the other games, he hasn't been aggressive. And guess what? They lost all the games. And this is just the bottom line with LeBron. He is a great player. He's like a Wilt Chamberlain. He's like a... a he's an all-time great talent to me. Like, he's a great player. He's like top whatever players or whatever the case is but losing like this and it's not even like he loses game one and two 15 point loss okay that's semi blowout game two blowout tonight it wasn't a blowout he had chances to make plays and like Joe Namath said you gotta make the play you gotta make the play you know what I'm saying Joe Namath said that about Mark Sanchez <laughs> when he did the butt fumble it's just when the game is there for the taking, he just doesn't turn it on. It's like he starts thinking about his stats. He starts thinking about, is this a good play? Is this the right? No. F it. Just leave it out on the floor. It doesn't matter if it's a good play or not. Like, just play how you want to play, man. Like, you're supposed to be you're supposed to be greatest of all time. Like, one of the GOATs. Just play, man. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, if you think about this. Kobe Bryant has five rings. He has... Some of the work out of all NBA champions, he has the l- lowest percentage shooting. Do you think that would deter Kobe from trying to jack up threes? You know, you do you think that would deter Kobe from trying to make plays? Whatever the case is, he would just be relentless, relentless, relentless. Even when they lost to the Celtics in 08, Kobe stayed on the floor the entire game, and it was a 40 point blowout. <laughs> See what I'm saying? It's just like, I'm not trying to even compare LeBron to Kobe. I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying, if you look at most NBA champions and great players, they don't care. They just don't care. And LeBron, he has, he cares too much. I don't know what it is about. I don't think, I don't think he's like a scared player. I just think he's too conscientious of everything. Like, he's just like, you could tell he's in his head. I don't think. Sean Livingston should be able to guard you. I don't think Andre Iguodala should be able to guard you. Like, nobody should be able to guard you. Like, tonight, who was able to guard Curry? 
Nobody. She even put Iman Shepard on him. He's hitting reverse layups on him, laughing at him. Shepard was trash talking the guy. You can't trash talk the other team's best player. Are you stupid? Stupid? Nobody could guard him tonight. Because that it just is what it is. It is what it is, man. That's what I'm saying. Like if you gotta understand, like when you're when you're the best player on the planet, it doesn't matter. Like everybody re re reveres LeBron as the best player on the planet, but when it's crunch time, he gets you numbers, but it's it's the little nuances. Like Curry, he didn't even shoot 100% well. He shot great from three though, seven for 13, but 11. He took 25 shots. I want to see LeBron shoot 30 shots. I want to see. If, you, if you're my best player, I want you to shoot 30 shots. If we're losing anyway, who cares? I we're losing anyway, so I need you I need you to go. I need you to go. I need you to go. And, you know, they, you look at the stats, not a down 3-1. And no team has ever come back from a 3-1 deficit. And I know a lot of people have a lot of uh, what you would call a lot of faith in, like, LeBron and, 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 and Kyrie, but... They're getting out coached. They're getting out coached, and they got outplayed down the stretch. And there's no if ands or buts about it. Got outplayed, got out coached, and then you got outplayed. Curry outplayed every. He outplayed the entire Cavaliers team by himself. And then you got other. Harrison Barnes hits a big three. These are the, this is what I'm talking about. Warriors have so many playmakers. It's not even funny. And you know, Bogut made a good point. Why would we want to? They were talking about um, Kevin Durant going to Warriors. Why would we want? Kevin Durant, when we we good as we are, we're good as we are. We got all these playmakers, and that's that. But that game is over. One hundred eight ninety seven. What happened to Stephen Curry? This is what happened to Stephen Curry. I told you guys. I told you. One thing about great players, you don't talk crap about them. <laughs> don't talk crap about them. Don't say what's wrong with them, because they're gonna show you what's wrong with them. Curry showed it tonight. Klay Thompson showed it tonight. Slash Brothers had. 63 points tonight. Whew. Whew. I think, what were they from three? Splat, splat. Wow, Harrison Barnes hit four three-pointers tonight. Splash Brothers were 50% from three. 11 for 22. By themselves. <laughs> Jeez. It's crazy. It's crazy. Anyway, game five, Monday. I think the Warriors are going to close it out. I picked the Cleveland Cavaliers to win in six. I thought Curry wasn't 100%. Curry shut me up. Much respect to you. You know, another thing I got to say is it would have been a disappointment if the Warriors would have lost this year by going, they went 73 and nine. And then to lose this year, going 73 and nine, setting a record and not winning the championship, it would be like, it would be anticlimactic. It would just be like, what the hell? Like, so, but we got what we wanted. Everybody got what you wanted. You wanted to. Healthy Cavaliers, healthy Warriors. We, 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 both of them went through their things. Kevin Love concussion. Kyrie, I mean, Stephen Curry, MCL. He was coming back from it. Everybody want, don't, want, don't want to say that, but whatever. It's, 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 the, it's the case. It's the truth. He was hurt. But guess what? We got the rematch. The rematch happened. Guess what? Same thing again. Ass whooping happened. Boom. That's it. Nothing else to talk about. I look, I look to see the uh, Golden State Warriors. Close them out at home and win back to back titles. And even if Cleveland were to find some way to win, the way that they would have to win is leave LeBron on the court 100% of the time and Kyrie on 100% of the time and then come back on a, maybe on a short turnaround and play game six. They wouldn't be able to win. So, game five, I look for the Warriors to onslaught the Cleveland Cavaliers and take the NBA title. This is Vlad. From whose junction has been a wonderful season. We this has been like one of the historically great seasons. We got to see a NBA repeat matchup. We got to see seventy three and nine. We got to see back to back MVP. We got to see Mr. Triple Double Westbrook. This has had got to be one of the best seasons of all time, ladies and gentlemen. Like, comment, and subscribe. Whose junction? Where hoops meets hoopla. Peace.